morning fellow mathematicians welcome back to another video i just noticed that i still have my keys in my pocket so um that's annoying that's that's pretty annoying let's get rid of those in one video that i already filmed and posted and uploaded blah 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 we actually noticed that this double integral right here is nothing but negative eta of one which is nothing but negative the natural log of two okay coolio we have shown that this thing actually converges to a nice value which was an infinite series. Okay, easy peasy lemon squeezy. That was a pretty nice proof back then, but now we are going to solve this thing directly right here using some easy Spielereien. So <laughs> it's going to be pretty quite easy. Solving double integrals directly can be uh, quite challenging, but here we are on the unit square, so some nice symmetry is involved. It's pretty damn easy, actually. So at first I would like to actually get rid of this double variable right here for now. So we are going to substitute x times t as being nothing but z for example. I really don't care. So let z be equal to x times t and we don't want t to be equal to zero at the moment. So we can divide both sides by t to arrive at when differentiating that dz over t is nothing but x. Okay, really cool thing right here. So nothing special right here. So this is dx. So that's even more cool than just x. So we can plug this stuff into here. So on our outer integral, nothing's going to change. Okay, so that's still the integral from 0 to 1 right here. If we plug 0 into x, this is going to give us z being equal to 0. If we plug 1 into here, that gives us z being equal to t. On the other hand, we have 1 over the natural log of z times 1 plus z. And then dx was nothing but this right here, so that's dz over t times dt. And here's the thing with double integral. Sometimes on the inner integral you're going to end up with something that's not easy integrable. So, so you see, um, still integrating 1 over this chunk right here with respect to z is going to be an absolute mess that's the same shit than just integrating this thing up here so so it doesn't help really but if we could interchange those two integral signs right here the the order of integration actually we would end up with the integral of one over t integrate with respect to t that's natural of t and well we would get rid of one thing so sometimes it's easier to interchange stuff and then integrate this at first before uh, doing anything else. So let us take a look at the unit square. I'm not good at doing um, drawing stuff, but we are still going to give it a shot. So if we take a look at the unit square, we have something like this and also our region is something like this right here. So we are integrating over this thing. Originally we had an x-axis and a t-axis. Meaning at first we were integrating over all these parts in x and then taking everything here in t. Okay, but now if you want to change the order of integration, we actually go over all the t's right here at first and then integrating over the whole and now set axis. What is going to happen when we interchange this stuff right here? So our outer integral has to stay constant because, well, if it wouldn't be constant, then it wouldn't be a definite integral. So if it would end up with a parameter, that wouldn't just be the point of having a definite integral, which we haven't parameterized. So this wouldn't make any sense. So at first, if we go over the z-axis, why not just integrate simply from 0 to 1, our region that we have right here. Okay, at first we are going to... Um, um, in the end, not at first, in the end we want to go over all the set values that we have right here. I'm terribly sorry. I'm not too good at doing double integrals. Meaning, actually our outer integral goes from 0 to 1. Now here comes the more um, unintuitive part. What's about the inner integral now? So our outer integral goes over dz. How about our inner integral? Well, there I would just like to make some arguing. So we know that our z uh, th that our t and our x right here, t and x, were actually between 0 and 1 at first. So we were actually able to find bounds right here just because of the um, up and lower bounds on our integral. So those go from 0 to 1, same spiel with t. But how about our set that we have right here? Well, obviously, our set starts from 0. So our set is actually greater or equal to 0. 
But what else do we have? Well, we have found a new parameterization for our set right here. And I want you guys to consider this. If we have an x value between 0 and 1 right now, okay, um, if our x actually takes the value 1, then our upper bound for z would be nothing but t, okay? I hope this does make sense. If our x is, for example, 1 half, 1, one quarter, 1 third, so between 0 and, and 1, then our z would be just a fraction of our t that we have right here. So our z really couldn't be any greater than t. So you can also multiply both sides by 2, for example, then you get that 2z is nothing but t, meaning our t is always going to be greater or equal than our z that we have right here. But we have an upper bound for our t, that's nothing but 1. Okay, so our t, our inner integral, is bounded between z and 1. I hope this did make sense to you guys. So meaning we are going to end up with 1 over natural log of z, 1 plus z, and then like I said before, like I said, <laughs> then we are integrating dt over t. This is basically just a constant regarding this inner integral, so we can bring it to the front between those two integrals, also the dz, we can Fubini this shit, like I used to say, and then we can integrate d dt with respect, uh, t 1 over t with respect to t, I'm terribly sorry, giving us the natural log of t, I said this before. Meaning we are going to get integral from 0 to 1, then 1 over natural log of z, 1 plus z whatsoever, z or z, I really don't give a shit, and then we have the natural log of t from z to 1 integrated with respect to c. If we plug 1 into here, this is going to give us 0, natural log of 1, okay, it's going to vanish. Then we have the second part of integration, negative sign, negative natural log of z. So this thing right here is the natural log of z, but with a negative sign, natural log of z, and 1 over natural log of z is going to cancel out. So that's cool, we got rid of that actually, meaning our integral at the moment is nothing but integral from 0 to 1. We had this negative sign right here, dz over 1 plus z. And on this interval, our geometric series would actually converge because if we just turn this plus into negative times negative, this holds in all fields, I made a proof on that, we can actually turn this, if it's in our interval of convergence, into the geometric series, giving us negative integral from 0 to 1, sum running from k being equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the kth power, z to the kth power, integrated with respect to z. On this interval, our um, or in the radius of convergence, our geometric series actually converges absolutely and uniformly, meaning we can interchange this limit and this limit right here, and also we can bring negative 1 to the kth power to the outside, leaving us with negative sum running from 0 to our infinity boy, negative 1 to the kth power, integral from 0 to 1, z to the kth power integrated with respect to z. And all that's really left to do is to integrate this right here. That's just a polynomial in z, so that's easy, giving us z to the k plus 1 power over k plus 1 on our upper and lower bounds, 0 and 1. Well, that's just a polynomial in z. On 0, everything's going to vanish right here. On 1, 1 to any power is just 1. So this thing is nothing but a negative sum running from k being equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the kth power over k plus 1. Either you see it or you don't, but you can make a little change of index right here, shift the index by 1 to the right, for example, to arrive at k being equal to 1 to infinity of, okay, negative 1 to the k plus 1 power would it be, and k plus 1 would be nothing but k in this case. And this thing right here is actually nothing but what we have discovered before, eta of 1. And like discussed in my previous video, this is nothing but the natural log of 2. Negative natural log of 2. And this is negative eta of 1. <laughs> there we go. I thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I'm not too used to doing uh, double integrals at this point, but I try to improve. I never did any complex anal analysis or um, multivariable calculus class, so um, I'm pretty new to this stuff. I only know a few basics through my physics courses, but never mind. If you didn't enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like, if you want to support this channel a bit more. Take a look into the description. There are various ways to support this channel actively and also passively. And up until the next video, have a um, double integral day. Love you guys. Appreciate it. Ciao.